Trigger Time! Hey everyone, I'm Sam Shocker. Thanks for tuning in. Our co-host today, our very own Brie Esrig. You can subscribe to her YouTube channel at Brie Esrig. Mm -hmm. She's mad for plaid. That's right. Editor Elle is back. Woo -woo! <laughs> and we have Brett Ehrlich rocking the Grateful Dead shirt. What, what? Hey, thanks junk food clothing for sending me this shirt. That was awesome. Yeah. I wanted it and they were like, yeah, you can have it. And I was like, I'll, I'll mention it. So I am mentioning it and it's awesome. Thank you so much. Also Halloween or whenever this comes out. And you can uh. catch me live at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern on Dr. Drew on Call. If this comes out today, I don't know if it is, please tune in tonight because I will be filling in for Dr. Drew and then again on Tuesday. So please tune in because I feel like no one's watching. <laughs> You had an excuse yesterday. It was the World Series. Game oh, okay, seven. Okay, good. So if it bombs, then I know. Daniel Radcliffe's delightfully feminist response to the label Unconventional Male Lead. He opened up to the Associated Press where he was promoting and talking about his film Horns, as well as the romantic comedy that he's in called What If. And he also talked about the label that has been given to him as been known as the Unconventional Male Lead. This is what happened. He was talking to the Associated Press about a different interview. And he said that when he was talking to them about what if they brought up the fact that you are the unconventional romantic uh, male lead. So he told the Associated Press, eventually I got bored of hearing that and kind of picked someone up on it. So I was like, what about me is unconventional exactly? Like, tell me. And then the interviewer from the previous interview told him, well, I think it's probably the fact that, you know, we associated you with playing Harry, the young boy wizard in which Radcliffe then responded. Well, the, the male population has had no problem sexualizing Emma Watson immediately. In other words, his whole point was that when you're, I guess, a romantic lead, like the conventional romantic lead, you can be sexualized if you're a younger girl. But then as a younger male, it's unconventional. Thoughts, five words or less. Wingardium Leviosa, boo. <laughs> um, more like, Daniel Radical. Woo! This is getting hairy. Cause it's getting them, but it's also getting hairy. Yes. That's pretty rad, Cliff. Okay. Nice. <laughs> oh my well God. Done. Okay, so what did you guys think about his response? I get it. And I, I did have a problem sexualizing Emma Watson. It's not that I didn't sexualize her, it's just that it made oh me God. feel very creepy. What about John Adarola? He was like all about her. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Even if you look in the Harry Potter movies, they gave Hermione and Ron like an extended romantic arc of these two people who fell in love. So you get to picture that. Harry really, not until the end, like it was the, the end and I even think that relationship was weird with Ginny Weasley. He wasn't of like a sexual being, you know? So he, he, you don't think of him as that sexual person. And I think people, when they say unconventional male lead are just trying to say like, you're a good actor, so you should be in movies. But when we see you, we don't think hubba hubba. But do, isn't it more younger actresses though that get sexualized than younger male actors? Well, no. Let's Taylor think Lautner. of some though. Totally. Think about it. We've, I mean, you've said this before that guys are more visual creatures, right? Yeah. They tend to gravitate towards looking at female bodies, and when you look at Hermione, she's still hot, mm -hmm. right? When you look at Harry, he's not like, like, you don't think like, oh, look at his abs, he's super sexy. But if you were to look at Harry older, I think a lot of women would still see him as sexy because he was, he had this great moral character and he yeah. was kind and he was powerful. She's only interested in you because she thinks you're the chosen one. But I am the chosen one. Okay, sorry. So I do think that, I, no, that's to your point. Mm -hmm. That's exactly to your point, Brie. I mean, I totally had a crush on Ron <laughs> growing up. Um, oh I thought he was sexy. Gosh. And yeah, it's like you said with Taylor Lauder. I mean, there are. We do sexualize young men as well. But I think it's unfair to call him an unconventional male lead because he's been a male lead so often. And yeah. like everything he's ever done, he's been a male lead. So it's just because this is a romantic comedy, I don't understand. You have like the Woody Allens who are the male leads in romantic comedies and like they don't get the same type of flack as mm -hmm. you would say. And like full frontal nudity. Totally. Like, I know. Why are people With horses. Them? Yeah. Giddy up. <laughs> what, do you, <laughs> what do you guys think about the line of, of questioning and though and his exact characterization though of what he believes an unconventional male lead is? Do you think that points fingers to males dominating pop culture? Do you see where he's coming from? Oh, I totally see where he's coming from. Just because he saw, he was like exposed to it like firsthand with 
standing next to Emma Watson and having to see like he was protective of her like yes. it, like like a sister and so he had to see I'm sure he took himself out of his own situation and focused more on her situation so I see where he's coming from yeah sure. I think he was being protective absolutely totally. other unconventional male leads like is Elijah Wood an unconventional male oh, lead I had the biggest lead? crush on him when I was growing sure. up I mean when, what is unconventional what is that like you I said I think it's, it's just like, like you don't look at him and say and Elle's hitting, hitting this too which is you look at him and you don't say like oh what a hot piece of because he's younger I or think it's because he, he was... had, here's something that's really hard to overcome, these glasses, <laughs> that's really hard to overcome right here, and then, a, a, you know, that whole thing. What? That's this? not sexy. The scar is hot. Yeah, but like a scar like here is like hot, you not know? The, like, not the, the lightning The Indiana bolt. Jones scar here is hot, but yeah. like, ooh, it's a lightning bolt on my head. <laughs> no, I just it's, think it's hot. <laughs> Brett. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I completely agree with you. But I think we should stop using the word unconventional to both sexes because you had like a Janine Garofalo who's going to, who's like in the truth about cats and dogs and mm -hmm. she's like the romantic lead. And she gets called unconventional all the time or mini driver gets called unconventional. But what does that actually mean? Beauty is so subjective like we talk about here all the time. So what makes it like what makes somebody the specific? It's a good question. I'll I guess tell you it would what the say unconventional the, the, is. Okay. The unconventional is these people have talent instead of just being cute. Ooh, that's a really that's good, it. that's it's a like, really good oh point. Oh my god. Okay, you're gonna think we're crazy, but we gave it to the person who could act. Ooh. That's a really good point. Let's ask our viewers. What do you guys think the definition is of an unconventional male lead or even female lead? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, follow us on Instagram and Tumblr at The Real Pop Trigger. We'll see you guys all next time on Pop Trigger.